Hey guys, so my name is Camilla and I'm working with the Sound Mind team and the Fix Up team to bring you the Building Your Mental Strength workshops. Yes, I can hear your excitement. I can see it through the screen. Thank you so much. We're so happy to be here with you wherever you're watching this. If you're in a classroom, hey guys, if you're in your house, you know, working from home kind of vibes, then hey to you too. Um, but yeah, no, overall, we're just really excited to bring you this workshop. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is Sound Mind? You also might be asking yourself, who is this babe on the screen? Let me answer those questions for you. So Sound Mind is an organization that is dedicated to promoting mental strength and positive well-being. And we do that in three main ways. We do that by educating people, we do that by equipping people, and we do that by empowering people in all things mental health and personal development. Now, we say mental strength because when I say the words mental health, what is your initial reaction? Like, what is your initial thought when you hear the words mental health? what comes to mind. For some of you, you're thinking about disorders. For some of you, you're thinking about mental health problems. You're thinking about mental health issues. Like the mind is automatically drawn to something difficult or negative. And we want people to have the complete opposite feeling when they when it comes to taking care of their minds. And so when we talk about mental strength, we're still talking about the health of your mind. But instead with the word strength, I want you to think gym. I want you to think training. I want you to think resilience and building. That is what we're focused on. And so the reason this is so important to me and why I care so much is because when I was younger, this is a story time guys, like, hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, I've got a story time for you. Um, when I was younger, I really struggled with my mental strength. On a scale of one to 10, I was a two. 10 being like, you're doing well, couldn't get any better, things come at you, but you get back up again, go girl. And one being, I need to stay in my bed forever with the blanket over me and ask for a delivery of Haagen-Dazs. Not Ben & Jerry's, not as the brand I'm talking, I want the good stuff, Haagen-Dazs straight to my bed, just deliver it right there. And I spent most of my time at a two. At most, I would get to a five. And this was me all the way from the age of 11 to roughly 18. And as a result of that, like that mental, I don't want to call call it weakness but yeah that mental weakness I found that I was really depressed I struggled with anxiety a lot and this showed itself as an eating disorder this showed itself as self-harming behaviors and it was a really tough time but eventually I learned new coping mechanisms I had conversations with friends and professionals who taught me taught me tricks and just they equipped me to be able to deal with my emotions in a healthy way and then I realized that I really struggled out in these streets for no reason. So many years were spent just in struggle for no reason. And so I turned around and I said, you know what, I'm going to take a vow. I am going to take a vow to make sure that other young people do not struggle in the same way. And I'm going to do that by making these tools that I've been given and the tools that everyone else is learning just more accessible. And so that is why we are where we are. And so, yeah, welcome to the workshop. Now, before we get into anything, I want to ask you a question. So I need you to just lean in a bit. Lean in, lean in. This is the question. How are you? Like, and before you're quick to turn around and say, yeah, no, I'm fine. Or like, why is she asking that? Or like, yeah, no, I'm good. I need you to actually pause and check in with yourself an answer. How are you? What's your energy feeling like today? What's your emotional state feeling like today? Like on a scale of one to 10, how are you actually feeling? And if you're over five, then that's great. Go you. We love to see it. And if you're below five, what can we do to make it a bit better? That is what today's workshop is about. And I'm talking specifically to the people who might be finding this whole lockdown, working from home, lack of exam situation, just a little bit frustrating and a little bit just meh 
to the people who are actually feeling a little lonely and they're feeling disconnected. Those two words. Because there's a difference between feeling lonely and feeling alone. Or no, there's a difference between feeling lonely and being alone. And that is, let me even share my screen with you so that you can, you can enjoy this with me. When I talk about being alone, alone describes a state of isolation or solitude when one is outside the company of others. So right now in this room that I'm in, what you can see, I'm alone. But if I was lonely, I could be stood in the midst of people. I could be surrounded by so many people and still feel like there was no one around me. I'd feel kind of sad and abandoned. And there are some people who are currently alone and lonely. And I just want to take some time to talk to you guys today. So I'm going to start off by just saying it's okay if you're feeling lonely. Um, we're going to try our hardest to not stay in that headspace, but I don't want you to beat yourself up because things are a little bit difficult and you don't know how to handle them. That is why you're here and this is why we're learning. So let me walk you through some of the benefits of actually being alone. Being alone is good because you can recharge. Shout out to all my introverts out there who just... Oh, like you love being with people and you love people, but sometimes you just need a minute to just let your mind reprogram itself, reset itself. And let me even talk to the extroverts out there. As much as you can gain energy from spending time with people, everybody is a bit of both. Everybody's an introvert and everybody's an extrovert. So extroverts, you also need a minute to recharge sometimes. But yeah, that is a benefit of being alone. Another one is it boosts self-esteem if it is done correctly. If you spend time on your own in a healthy manner, like affirming yourself, learning about yourself, what are your likes? What are, you, what are your dislikes? What do I do well? What don't I do well? How can I improve? Then that helps boost your self-esteem. In that time alone, you recognize that I am enough. I'm good. I can do this. Productivity. Some of you hate working with other people. You hate hearing them breathe. You hate seeing them move from the side of your eye. You hate the fact that they be talking when you're trying to do your stuff, like you hate it. So being alone really helps with productivity for some people. And lastly, being alone boosts unique creativity. Why have I said unique? Because every single person is creative. We all have this beautiful ability to make something out of nothing. But when we're alone, we get this opportunity to discover it and to explore it without the fear of judgment, without the worry of like how it's going to be perceived or whether or not you've made it perfect or this, it's all gone. It's just you and the ability to explore. And so that gets to increase. But like I said, there are some negatives to being lonely. So the negative effects of loneliness can be hopelessness. Like you just struggle to see what the point is. Like I almost describe it as the world is full of so much color. See my room, so much color. I'd be loving yellow. But when you feel hopeless, it would be like there was a gray filter over everything. Like the world was in black and white, old time film kind of thing. And that can be really discouraging. And as a result of feeling hopeless, you can actually end up dealing with just a lot of fatigue like you know that kind of tiredness that even when you sleep it doesn't go anywhere you wake up you're tired you you sleep you're still tired you're doing nothing you're tired that kind of tiredness is what loads of people are experiencing in the midst of this season and lastly low self-esteem now being alone like I said when you steward it correctly when you look after it properly when you use that time wisely can boost your self esteem but when you're feeling lonely when you're feeling sad and hopeless and like abandoned it's so easy for the mind to make up lies to tell you that no one wants to hang out with you to make up you can misread a text message from someone because of the lies your mind's telling you and all of a sudden you feel unwanted or you feel like there's something wrong with you and all that so loneliness can really affect your self-esteem now 
that's a bit depressing to hear. That's just a bit heavy to hear. So the question is, what is the solution to loneliness or what is one of the solutions to loneliness? Before I tell you, I want you to repeat today's mantra with me, okay? Are you ready? Sit up straight and I want you to say it with me. It's better to give than receive. It is better to give than receive. One more time, it's better to give than receive. So why do I say that? I'll explain it a bit later. The solution to your loneliness, I'm giving you a solution, is number one, before we do that activity, the solution to your loneliness is to give. It is to give your time to other people. It's to check in on someone else. It's to make sure that someone else isn't feeling the way you're feeling. And what you'll find is, as I'm looking after someone else, my mind and my focus are no longer on me. I'm no longer worried about the fact that I feel hopeless because I'm encouraging someone else. And sometimes while you're encouraging someone else, you end up encouraging yourself and you feel a lot better. Um, and then another solution is to actually do a bit of exercise, to move your body, to not just sit still and in the same place. I know, again, we said hopelessness and fatigue can make everything feel a bit long and you don't want to move. And that's exactly why you should move. Don't stay in the same place. Just don't do it. Don't do it. And so with that being said, I want you to take five minutes and I want you to write down the name of three people you can reach out to over the next week and this is not reach out so that you can complain or let them know how you're doing if they ask that's great but your main aim of that conversation is to check in with them so whether it's friends whether it's family whether it's a colleague whoever it is reach out to that person those three people and then I want you to write down the names of two days a week that you're going to do some form of exercise and then let me know what is that form of exercise and then once you've written all that down I want you to share it with the person next to you and if you're in a room on your own then I want you to share it with yourself just say it out loud tell yourself what it is you're about to do so five minutes right don't worry about it I know you're wondering how's she gonna know when the five minutes is up I've got a timer so we're going to get into this right now. Go.
just under two minutes and we are looking at who we're going to reach out to, what exercise we're going to do and sharing it with a friend. absolutely amazing love that you took the time to do that hopefully you've all picked someone or people that you haven't spoken to recently um what exercise is it that you're planning on doing let me know um i am in the process of trying to run this winter is not in favor of me being able to run but we're gonna keep trying so we try and do that twice a week so, and my days are supposed to be Monday and Wednesday you know sometimes that shifts but it is what it is but thank you so much for taking part in that now I'm just going to share a little bit again in regards to the benefits of why we're telling you to do what we're doing but before we do I want you to repeat the mantra with me okay three two one it's better to give than receive it's better to give than receive. One more time. It is better to give than receive. Amazing. And why is that? Number one, giving changes your focus. It takes you off your problems. It takes you off why you're struggling. It takes you off how you're feeling and it focuses you on something else. And whatever you look at, you magnify. Whatever you focus on, you magnify. So if you're looking at how you're feeling and you're feeling hopeless if you're looking at how you're feeling you're feeling tired if you're looking at how you're feeling you're not feeling great you magnify that but if you're looking at someone else if your focus is now I need to make this be person feel better I want to make this person smile I want to change their day then all of a sudden you magnify that feeling and that emotion of joy of encouragement of support and you naturally begin to feel better another benefit is oh. okay you get to be a blessing to someone so as much as it's great that this giving makes you feel better you're also changing someone's day there's someone out there who might have been struggling or who was feeling abandoned or like no one cared and you get to just pop in and remember remind them that they're seen and they're loved and they're important and who wouldn't want to do that and lastly 
exercise just helps you win biologically when you exercise you trigger those neurotransmitters that release the endorphins that are chemicals that make you feel great i'm talking dopamine i'm talking serotonin all those things that just make you smile or get you excited literally serotonin is known as the happy drug that we like produce naturally when you exercise, you help to produce that, which naturally just fights whatever it is that you're internally, internally feeling. So last thing, a reminder, what are the action points for today? What am I walking away with? What am I doing? Number one, we're exercising two times a week, whatever days that you pick to remember them, whatever activity you picked, remember it and do it. And next we are reaching out to three people and we're checking on them. How are they doing? What's gone well for them? What are they struggling with? What can I help you with? Those are the kind of questions you're asking. Guys, this has been great. It's been great. 10 out of 10 would do this with you again. And hopefully I'll see you in another workshop. But until then, peace.